Today I'm tasting this Shi Fang Longjing from uh, Master's Tea uh, by Adagio Teas. And this is uh, commonly known as Dragon Well. Been excited to try this because I've heard a lot about it. So here's your dry leaves and they're very uh, pressed and flat. And I feel like I would uh, recognize these, uh, this tea again now that I've had this uh, learning tasting experience. Um, there's the wet leaves and um, the color of the liqueur. Let me see, I don't know if I can pour this left-handed. Very, very, very pale. Um, so when it was pale, we were expecting, um, you know, not much there. Some of the other pale ones we've had have been very uh, watery, but in fact, there there is so much going on. So here's uh, my notes. And um, I want to mention, honorable mention goes to uh, this video by uh, My Leaf. I watched it. This is where these leaves are made, and I learned a lot, so I would recommend you uh, go watch that video. But uh, so here's my tasting notes, and it's a green tea, and it's from the West Lake area of, I'm not even going to try to say those words. Uh, I'll leave that to the experts because I'm new and learning about teas and trying to teach others to uh, be brave about learning about teas. But in that video, I got this uh, screenshot. This is the area. And um, you see those uh, Shifeng Mountains. So that's where the most uh, classic, uh, I don't know what to call it. He'll tell you better. But any any of them in this area is called uh, Shi Hu. You see how I put my pronunciation to it. Any of them in this area can uh, call, be claim that name. So I uh, learned that, and I got me a screenshot of that area because I think that the um, the the green area. I just love how the tea areas over in China look um, with their rows, and it's so artistic. So, um, any, that's called the West Lake area. That doesn't mean that you can't have uh, Long Jing from other areas. Um, Long, uh, or Shi Feng means Lion's Peak. That's the name of that mountainous area. So this is the Lion's Peak Dragon Well. So I watched that video and what I learned it briefly is that um, they're first laid out flat for five or six hours to wither and then uh, they are pan fried but um, uh, traditionally that's done in these metal blocks but um, most of the time the first pan firing is done by machine at 180 to 200 degrees um, to stop the enzymatic process so that the tea stays green. That's why we have green tea. And then as uh, seen by this screenshot, then there's a second firing and it's usually done by hand and the leaves are pressed during this second firing. That's how they get flat. And uh, it's uh, so hot that these people have to be careful not to burn their hands when they are doing it. I mean, it's really a skill. Then, if need be, they're dried by hot air, depending. So, I also learned from that video that number 43, Longjing Cultivar, is the most common. There's two common ones. Um, I didn't catch the name of the other one. But this is the most common one, cultivar, meaning a... Uh, uh, you know, it was made off of the original plant, um, and this is the 43rd batch, I would guess. That's what it means. Um, and many, many, many of the uh, tea bushes in that area are number 43. So this is a very, very uh, popular and uh, expensive uh, 
T. This particular one, um, this stuff came off their website, the number 43 and uh, the Pre Jing Ming Festival. So you also want to look for ones that are done before that because the ones after that are uh, not as high of a quality. And it's very common that they say that apparently. So I didn't look about the buds pointing upwards while brewing. Hmm. I will have to look at that again. But I got that out of a book. Um, the best of them are made with one new leaf and one new bud. There's the pale color. It's definitely earthy and vegetal. It's supposed to have a slight floral, but I didn't get that. I didn't pick up on that. Um, but the wet leaves, man, they are extremely vegetal. Well, I mean, it's just a, a intense um, scent. The uh, vegetal that you get when it's dry, like uh, quadruples after it's brewed with the wet leaves. Uh, and, it, and it's done so quickly because I brewed it at, you know, one, it said 170, but I did 180 because I did it before I read um, uh, for two to three minutes. I did one to two minutes. Uh, for the body, uh, my husband and I both said right away, surprisingly, the body, you know, we were expecting the body of it to be um, really light. And instead, there was a lot of body to it uh, for such a pale color. The astringency was, uh, you know, I thought it would be lower too, but no, it was bright and light. I really liked it. Taste, I definitely got the sweet grass and roasted, and I tasted for a while, and I tried to come up with another taste flavor, and I couldn't. The finish was also surprising. Um, very juicy and mouth-watering. Um, I mean, I thought very, very, like it just, it just brought out that saliva. <laughs> and uh, it lingered for a while. And our rating, we both said four hearts because we definitely would buy this again and enjoy it. But we're not sure that, it, you know, with all the varieties out there, that this would be something we'd keep on hand. But definitely buy it again.